Welcome to Cut Tutorials and in this video I'll be doing practice problem 14.4. Practice problem 14.4. So now we are to sketch the board plots for this transfer function. Looks something like this in my edition of the textbook. Right. So now the task is to transform this into a recognizable form, which is one of the forms in um, table 14.3, I believe, in the textbook. Now, once you have everything in a recognizable form, then you can now extract, you can now determine each of the contributions of the factors, right? So you can identify the factors and their contributions. That is basically what I mean. So now let's do that. So at the top, we don't really have to do much. We have a constant. We have a zero at the origin. We can't do much there. Now we can just look at the bottom and see that we can now transform each of these into one of the standard forms or one of the recognized forms in the table. And to do that, we just simply have to factor out some stuff. So dealing with the bottom, which will ultimately affect the top, here's what will happen. So if you factor out four from this bracket, you should have one and this, right? Now here in this bracket, if you factor out 10, you should have one plus J omega divided by 10, and not forgetting to put the square over everything. So this operation is actually happening within the larger bracket, which squares everything. Now, if you were to now take this 10 out completely, um, you basically have something like this. So it, it, it should also be squared because it's part of the bigger bracket. And now you have this as your final result, right? So we basically now have this and we can simplify this because we now have the standard form that is in standard form in standard form at the top. We have the standard form. We just have to move the constants around. So this should be 100. And this is just 4. So 4 multiplied by 100. It's basically 400. And we have 50 divided by 400. And it multiplies the rest of the stuff. So basically have one plus J omega divided by four, and then multiply by this. And what we have to do now is to see that, okay, let's see what we have here. So that would be one and over there basically be eight. And you'd ultimately have this. It's your final transfer function. And we can single out each of the contributions of the factors. So let's do that. Let's now talk about each of the factors and how they contribute to each of the plots, starting with the magnitude plot, h, decibels, and drawing the axes. So this is just a rough sketch once again, because you don't specifically have the scaled version of the axes, right? So now that we have this, let's see what we can do. So starting with the constant, this constant over here, its contribution would be 20, like this, 10 of its value. And now if you put that into your calculator, you should basically get negative 18. So you can just draw a dotted line somewhere here and say it's about negative 18.06. Just draw a dotted line to show the contribution of that constant on its own or by itself. Now that we have that, we can move on to something else, talking about this zero at the origin and looking at its effect. So we basically expect it to pass through one and we're going to have 0 0.1 over there. And at about negative 20, that is where we have a decade before one, that is where we expect to have 20 because we're looking for a gain of 20 decibels per decade. 
So something like that, even though it's not quite straight. But what I'm saying is between this point and a decade later, we should have increased our value by 20 uh, decibels per decade, right? That is what is happening over there. The contribution of the zero at the origin is a slope of 20 decibels per decade, which passes through the point one. And this is how you basically show it. So a decade later, you have an increase of 20 decibels. Each decade, you basically increase by 20 decibels. And now moving on to the bottom, we go to this value over there, which is four. And we're now going to have a slope of negative 20 decibels per decade, which follows a similar reasoning to that of the positive 20 decibels per decade, but now it's actually decreasing, right? So it goes on like that. A decade later at 40, we'd expect to, so this is zero, expect to have 20 over there. So that is what is happening over there. And it goes on like that, following that trend of negative 20 decibels per decade. So now we have three of the factors. We have the constant, we have the zero at the origin, we now have this simple pole, and we now look at this repeated pole. Let's look at the effect of the repeated pole. Now the repeated pole, we basically have a slope of negative 20 N decibels per decade. Now that the N is two in this case, according to the table, the N is two, so it should have a slope of negative 40 decibels per decade. That is what we expect from the plot, that is what we expect from the behavior and contribution of the repeated pole. So we're going to go to its actual value, which is 10. So you, you take this bottom value, which is 10, which is somewhere there, I assume. And from that point, you basically should expect to have um, a slope of about negative. If you have the proper paper, graph paper, then it should actually work out perfectly but if you're just approximating then we just basically expect this to be steeper than this one that is why it basically crosses over there and we now have the contribution of everything right now that we have the contribution of everything we just basically add it up starting from the left going to the right so the way that we do that once again starting on this line and looking at the factors that we have we expect to start somewhere here and go up but don't forget that we have the effect of the yellow line, which is the constant, which is going to shift whatever point this was downwards, right? So that point is actually going to be shifted downwards. So let's say we are about negative 20 something. And if we shift it by that much, we are approaching negative 40, right? So you can just say it's going to cross somewhere there. But now it still has the same slope as the 20 decibels per decade, which goes up. So that's fine. We're just going to continue just like that and see that we only have the effect of the constant and the green line up to this point up to the point four when we get to four now when we get to four now this is introduced so we all along we are having a slope of 20 decibels per decade and now this negative 20 decibels per decade is introduced, which means that the two will cancel out or the effect of the 20 decibels per decade will be canceled out. And that is shown by a straight line. So 20 minus 20 will be zero. So this would have a slope of zero. And this would continue until we have something else which disturbs this behavior. And that something else comes at this point, which is 10. And at 10, what do we have? So the two cancel out, the 20 decibel per decade and the negative have been canceling out all along, but now we have a disturbance, we have an introduction of that thing over there, which is negative 40, which means it's the only thing now that will, that will actually influence the behavior of this thing. So basically now it goes down with the slope of negative 40 decibels per decade. And that is your magnitude plot. If you want to write all along here, we had about negative, we have positive, and then here we had a slope of zero, and then here we basically have that. And this is all a result of adding each of the factors and their contribution to the overall plot. So that is the idea behind it. Just go to the tables and actually draw dotted lines of each of the factors.
and then add it up as you go from left to right. So that is one way I can put it, or that is the reasoning behind this. So that is the magnitude plot. We can now move on to the phase plot. We can call it phi, where then um, units in degrees. And once again, we're going to analyze the effect of each of the factors. So the effect of a constant is zero degrees. So zero degrees doesn't really matter. And the effect of uh, zero at the origin is basically 90 degrees. So that would be the effect. And a simple poll, the effect of that would basically go to a decade before, which would be that in this case. And the same applies to the... Um, Okay, the same applies to the repeated pole. We go to a decade before, which would be one. But for the simple pole with n of one, which is this one, you'd basically just have a slope of negative 45 decibels per decade. So by the time it passes four, it would actually be at about negative 45 and it would stop, <coughs> it would stop at um, negative 90 a decade later. So this is how it would go and it would stop over there. So this is negative 90 degrees N, which would just be negative 90 degrees for the case of the symbol pole at four. So you go to a decade before, which is 0 0.4, and you make sure that it passes the pole value at negative 45, round about there, because the general slope is of this form. Now that the n is 1, then this is what you expect. And now doing the same for the repeated pole. Now the n in this case is 2, and we expect to have a slope of negative 90 degrees per decade using this formula. And doing that or following that, we're going to come to a decade before, which is one because the pole value is 10. So we're going to go to a decade before and have a slope of negative 90. So by the time it reaches 10, it would have crossed the 90 degree point because the slope is negative 90 degrees per decade. And it's going to stop here at negative 180 a decade later. So a decade later, we can trace those two points, connect them, and it goes there and it stops to flatten out over there. So now once again, what we have to do is just add the effects of all of this stuff. And starting from the left, you'll see that the first thing that we encounter would be this shift. So you'd start up there because this constant shifted the graph up here by 90 degrees, but that only continues until we get to this point over here, because we now have slopes to deal with. So we're now going to continue with those slopes going down, going down. And once you reach this one point over there, then you basically have a change in your slope, right? So the slope all along was something like negative 45 degrees per decade. And once you reach the one point, it steepens and it becomes the addition of these two. So about negative 135 degrees per decade. And you're going to continue like that until one of them flattens out. So the one that flattens out first would be this one, which is the the simple pole at four, so it flattens out, which means that your slope would actually now be negative 90. So now we, before or from this point, we were adding the two slopes. So at this point, it was something like that. But before the one point, it was just the effect of this yellow line. As you can see, it's the only one that comes in this region. And then after that point, we actually encounter this one point which adds the slope as well and we now have this as our slope and it continues until the yellow line fades at negative 90 degrees and once that fades we now only have the effect of the red line which would just be 
negative 90 so the slope would just be less steep and we continue until that phase as well so once again all you're doing is just going along adding the effect of each of the components and the resulting graph would just be you adding the slopes and the shift which is introduced by all of these so that is all this was practice problem 14.4 if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and i will see you in the next video